This is for those who believe in the potential of science. Making brave choices, choosing to push the boundaries. This is why we believe in what science can do. We had mandatory science fair. And at the time, it was really troubling in our country. We had an energy crisis going on, a little bit like some of the climate change going on globally. And so we needed to get to green energy. And President Carter, who was president when I was a kid, uh, uh, had put solar panels in the White House, and we were doing a lot of things related to that. And so I started to do my science fair projects on solar and wind and green energy and try to discover new principles and ways we could get to solve these problems. And I think. I was lucky because I learned about sort of these magical things like science and math and ENG that can help you really solve problems in the world. And so uh, it's a great thing that you guys are here because just like one of the great ways to make change is like a television show, telling stories, writing, video, all the YouTube and, and Vine and things you can do there, Snapchat and really communicating. There's also magical powers with STEM and all of these tools. So that's how I got pulled into it. Marvin, will you share how you got pulled in? I think my story is, a, my story is a little different than Megan's. I'm from um, inner city Detroit. So we didn't have um, many, um, I guess you can say, science fairs or, or, or teachers encourage, encouraging us to become engineers. And so one day, I was about nine years old, and I'm driving home in Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, and I see a funnel cloud forming. I see a tornado for me, and I'm just, I'm just awestruck. And so from then on, every day I got home and I watched the Weather Channel. Right. <laughs> and so I can name you all the, the characters on the Weather Channel like it was the Power Rangers. I knew everyone's names. Vivian Brown, I just knew everyone, right? And so um, that kind of transformed to me watching the Weather Channel, to Discovery Channel, to History Channel. And so by the time I got to high school, I myself um, was going out trying to find these resources to figure more um, figure out more information about STEM education. And so uh, eventually I got to college and I wanted to be an engineer, right? And so um, one thing I would say is that uh, although it's not uh, something that you know, young kids from inner city Detroit do often, um, it's, it changed my life um, for, for multiple reasons. It taught me how to think critically. And I think that's where it's something that's very important for, for, for students to learn at a very early age. Okay, so. Yeah. yeah. So it's awesome. Uh, Marvin did his research with some great kids, uh, at middle school kids in an after school program, kids who don't have a lot of resources. One of the things that was interesting that you said to research was uh, some of the education tech tools. Uh, sometimes have some bias to them. They had uh, these kids, some kids had reading issues and there were long form word problems. So they weren't able to do the math that was in this particular form. So kind of thinking about the technology you're designing and make sure everyone can use it and everyone can play with it and that it's, it works for people's culture and it's really engaging was. Which is, which is very important for you know, the, next, the next generation, right? Yeah. Um, it's very, going forward, um, the STEM crisis is, is, is a real thing. Um, and so we need more and more thousands, millions of more students to go into STEM. Um, and we need to be sure that it's an, as inclusive as possible. And so one thing I realized, and as you also realize, is that in everything there's some sort of bias that keeps some group um, from being their best, um, be it against women, being against people of color, being against those who are handicapped. And so just always recognize that as young students growing up that nothing is impossible for you to do. Okay? Yeah. Nothing's impossible for you to do. One of the things that's a challenge um, it is, and I love uh, that we're talking about media. Sometimes when you're watching TV, uh, you notice that there's a little bit bias in the writers. So one of the things I found out that in kids' TV and families' TV, you know, anybody in here know a little bit of coding? Yes, no? Yeah, oh, so wow. oh, that's incredible. Good, good. So coding is really important. Doesn't mean you have to be a programmer when you grow up, but a little bit of knowing how to make stuff work. Like, for example, I brought along this board See this board, it's just the board inside your cell phone, right? Knowing how the stuff that you love, you know, breaks open and how to make it and, you know, like just more details about stuff, how to program or make a blog, write a blog, you know, how to get into the guts of things are really important. One of the things I found out, talking to my friend Gina Davis, who's a famous actress, you guys might know her from Stuart Little uh, and, and some other films. Um, she said that when they cast, she counted on TV characters. And out of every four characters on TV for kids and family, only one of them's a girl. And when it comes to STEM, out of every five characters, only one of them's a girl. And when it comes to programmers, coders, I just saw a lot of boys and girls raising their hands, but for every 15 characters, only one's a girl. 
So when we watch TV, we get this weird reinforcement of propaganda, sorry, that, that makes you think, oh, the boys do that and the girls don't. And so we got to work on that. And Marv and I were able to do something fun in the White House. How, who here has ever read something on Wikipedia? Yeah. Ooh, yeah, Isn't Wikipedia cool? Like, people just make that together. A handful of people put up this structure, and then everyone writes their, their brilliant knowledge all over the world. Well, one of the things you can do is you can edit Wikipedia. You can add to it. You can do some research and put more people in. And so Black, during Black History Month, what did we do? Yeah, so during Black History Month, we went to Wikipedia. We, we noticed that um, there are a very small amount of information on African-American women and men who do amazing things in STEM um, and their history. And so going all the way back to, um, to pre-Civil War era, we have these great African-American women and men who created some of the things that we use every day, like dishwashers that we, don't, that we know nothing about. And so at the White House, we hosted about 75 people, and we did a, a, the first ever White House edit-a-thon. We went on an uh, edit-a-thon, right? This is that a new word for you? Yeah. Uh, and so we did a Wikipedia edit-a-thon. We went on to Wikipedia and different um, sources of information across the internet, and we added information about these outstanding African-American men and women in STEM during Black History Month. And, some, and I, I, find, I found out, even as a 27-year-old, some things that just blew my mind about these outstanding um, uh, newly freed slaves who were doing just amazing things. Um, and so all these things are, are hidden in plain, in plain sight. And so um, uh, even if you can go out there yourself, find, if you find some more information about a woman in STEM or a young man in STEM who's doing some great things, you can go on Wikipedia um, and add this, add this information about them yourself. It's really important to do because it's hard to be what you can't see. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, a lot of the movies get biased. Actually, I'm excited for the new Star Wars because one of the things I love is the Star Wars series. But one of the sad things is out of six films, there's really only two women in the whole thing, if you think about it. So that's a little messed up. And so I think they're going to fix it in the next one. Yeah. But it's something we have to pay attention to. So we have these biases. And so Wikipedia is full of them. And you guys can help make that change. One of my favorite people that we were adding more information, she, of course, was already there a little bit. But adding more was a woman named Katherine Johnson, who's from here in Maryland. Um, she actually graduated from high school when she was 14. Graduated from college when she was 18, took every math class. She's uh, African American and she's 96 or 7 years old now. She calculated the trajectories for the Apollo mission to the moon. She calculated trajectories for Alan Shepard, who you should research. He was the first American to go into outer space and come back. So, what was the parallel? What was he going to do? You know, how was he going to go back? Where was he going to land? Catherine had to do the math and tell us. And also John Glenn, who was the first American going around, she calculated that. And in fact, they had started using more computers. And John wouldn't fly unless Catherine double-checked all of the math. She stayed up for, uh, she did, it took her like 12 hours to hand calculate it all. She got the same number. She's like, okay, you can go. <laughs> so, I love, there's an outtake. If you, you guys know makers.com, it's uh, the series of women's films, short films, and Catherine's films up there. And there's a moment. Uh, when Alan Shepard is about to leave the moon and you see him on that distant camera you know, that came streaming and it cuts to Catherine and she's like, we were really nervous when they were coming off the moon because if they didn't get it exactly right, they weren't going to make it into orbit. And so she's like, I'm looking at him and I'm hoping he's got it right. And I'm thinking, I hope I got it right too. <laughs> So, you know, these are real people who did extraordinarily heroic things, and we want to make sure that they get included. The reason why it matters today for you guys to know that is because sometimes if you had the chance to see people like you doing these things, STEM isn't always easy, even if it's fun. You know, there's this, this expression called, in effort, there's joy. Yeah. Right? When you work hard and you really bring it, it's awesome. And so sometimes when you're doing that and you hit a wall and it's hard and you got to debug it and do it again and again, if you've seen a lot of people like you, you feel like, oh, I'll be like them. I just got to work harder or maybe this teacher or this thing, maybe that's not exactly right. I got to do it a different way and learn a different way. But if you weren't from that experience and you don't see those people and it gets hard, sometimes you get this bias on yourself. You're like, oh, this proves that I'm from the group that can't do this. And, and that's not true. Right? And so we want to make sure that the history role models that have always been here get included because we were making some mistakes in our history uh, that we're fixing. Yeah. And that's all right. I've, I've never saw, when I was growing up your ages, an African-American male with a PhD in engineering. Right? And so you're I'm so, looking at one. <laughs> right. And so you see, it's, it's hard to become what you can't see and what's hidden from you. And so um, uh, they're here. You know, they're there. And so just getting those stories out there, um, seeing this amazing woman uh, who I get to sit next to every day as an intern, 
um, definitely just shows that there are outstanding women in, te in the tech ecosystem. And so you can be just like Megan. I'm so serious. Yeah, you. you. <laughs> She's so, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we're going to move on to the amazing Dean Kamen. But really encourage you guys. And also, just remember, like, the universe doesn't really separate things from, like, biology and chemistry and English class and history and physics and, you know, PE. So mash them all up. Figure out what you love to do. If you love art, do art and do it digitally and not digitally and help people make user interfaces and make beautiful paintings or whatever it is you want to do. If you love physics, do all these things. Just try all these things because you guys are going to live more than 100 years and it's going to be an amazing adventure. So thanks for having us. Thank you very, thank, thank you very much.